It's time to talk fall. Again, I know it's bizarre talking about fall when it's 100 degrees outside, or at least it's 100 degrees here. But the way that the fashion industry works, the beauty industry works, is that the, the season comes before the actual season, which makes sense, actually, because they have to plan out these collections, you know, a long time in advance and they have to be ready to be in stores so that you can buy them ahead of the season. Uh, I recently put something up on Instagram about shopping at Chanel. Their pre-fall shoes and bags and clothes are already in some stores and not all the collection has arrived in the stores yet but actually quite a bit and some of it's already started to sell out and again it's July. So if there are pieces from very high luxury brands like Chanel that you're interested in, you actually do have to like order them from the boutiques and from the essays very early on. Um, I actually did pre-order a pair of boots. I showed them in my uh, Instagram post and I certainly have them here. Uh, once I get them, it will be a while because they're not, they're not actually available to order uh, for a couple weeks, um, but they are in the store so you can see them and and get them and there's like 10 of them that's it <laughs> so yeah uh, i guess that's the way it works but what we're going to talk about today is fall beauty collections and i'm gonna this is you know my normal will i buy it but i'm gonna do this will i buy it a little differently so i was looking back on um, all the ones i've done over the last three years and I go into, you know, I follow accounts on Instagram and I'll make sure those are all down in the description box and they're all fantastic. They do an amazing job of what's telling, telling us what's coming out and, you know, it gives everyone, I think, an opportunity to figure out what they want to budget for. Um, but they're really, I haven't really done a lot of, uh, at least with all of you, thought about why I decide to pick up certain things or my thoughts on certain collections and why I think they're trending in a certain way. I have tried to weave that into my videos that I've done more recently about like quiet luxury and why that's a thing, um, why certain brands are going towards a more neutral palette, those types of those types of issues. So I'm going to try to weave that into today's video. Uh, I'm going to still do the whole, you know, pictures and showing you what's coming. I do have some things over on Patreon still. Most of it's been released announced somewhere in the world so I feel comfortable having it uh, here on YouTube but there are one or two things specifically from Chanel that I have blurry pictures of <laughs> over on Patreon that I haven't seen anywhere else um, and once I can get more clarity on those I will but I don't have any just yet and again with those brands if you're very careful about putting up any sneak peeks um, because you know they are adamant about taking those things down and possibly taking your channel down with it. So with that, I'm going to move over to the side so we have lots of space to look at pictures. Okay, so I'm over here. <laughs> pictures over here. So I'm going to do this actually by um, brand this time. So we're going to go through and talk about the different brands. I'm going to end um, with the brand and product that I'm not going to pick up and I want to explain why. Okay, so first, Dior. So there's a lot coming out for Dior. Some of it we've seen, some of it we haven't. Um, there is a fall collection that we have seen that looks like it's embossed with like a sweater knit. Um, there are two palettes, they are limited edition. One is Rouge Saga and the other is Beige Couture. Beige Couture, as you can probably see from the pictures, looks beige. <laughs> it looks very light. Now. I will pick up both of these, uh, although I think the beige is going to be beige. But I do recognize that for a lot of folks that this is actually the kind of makeup they want to see because the analytics tell us, at least if you look at like buying guides and um, financial information, that neutrals sell. And so I'm not shocked that a company like Dior would come up with a neutral, uh, fall leaning. I mean, the colors are fall-ish, but things that are safer, again, not a huge shock um, for their fall collection. The beige uh, palette does look lightly pigmented to me, uh, but we'll see. We'll see how, how it actually performs when we, you know, you look at swatches online, so sometimes it's hard to tell. So we'll see when we actually get them in hand. 
The Rouge Blush is in 537 Grand Ball Satin. That shade exists now in the reformulated blushes. I did not pick it up because I heard from someone somewhere that Grand Ball Satin Blush looked a lot like Charnel. Uh, I don't know if that's true, but that's what I heard. So I didn't buy it. So I will buy it in this collection because it's a limited edition design because it's got that sweater in it thing. Um, but if anyone of you has Grand Ball, you don't need this Grand Ball because the only difference is, is the embossing. Unless you're somebody who really wants to collect it, I mean, it'll eventually go bad, but if it, that's your thing, that's, I get it. Um, then there are two nail polishes which look really interesting to me. Uh, and I'm not usually like a nail polish person. I don't, you know, generally, uh, I, I have lots of nail polishes, but I don't spend a lot of time with my nails. Uh, I usually do the, like the press on nails or maybe I do my nails if I'm lucky. Uh, but it's 415 Ozy, Oz, Oze, and 746 Rouge Atea, LTA. And they look like shimmery, bronzy, copper. I just, they looked interesting to me. So I am going to pick up that entire collection. So that is something that I, again, I recognize that it's very neutral. I recognize that a lot of people will say, you know, what is, what is your doing? It's more neutrals. But again, and I'll, I'll get to this more um, when we talk about the overall trend and what's happening. I think, I think that's, it makes sense given the, the circumstances that we're in financially uh, all across the globe. So the other thing that, that I just saw, um, and it's um, this one's from uh, Emmett Beauty Talk. There's a picture of a Christian Dior a limited edition rouge blush 209, and it's a bluish lavender. Um, no details about dates as of yet, but it looks really interesting. Um, it almost looks like their eyeshadow, like, you know, the square little individual shadows that they have. Anyway, it looks, it looks like a beautiful shade. Um, and that's something I would definitely pick up. I'm wondering if that's like their holiday since the fall looks like the sweater embossing. Don't know. Not sure. And of course, somebody is mowing their lawn. It's like six o'clock at night. Why are you mowing your lawn? Okay. Uh, so anyway, that's what I have on Dior. Tom Ford. There's a couple of things. Can you hear that? Seriously, it's six o'clock at night. Why are you mowing your lawn? Sorry, guys. Uh, Tom Ford, two runway palettes. There are two new shades, 43 Ambrosia and 44 Dark, dark Opulence. I have seen swatches. Um, it does look to me that these are pigmented shades, but then I've heard some people say that they're, they're kind of sheer when they're looked at in natural light. It's a little hard to tell. Tom Ford has varying um, um, formulas, as we've talked about. So it's hard to know what these are going to be. I do not believe these are the crown formula. I think these are either the original formula. I don't think they're wet dry. They could be. I, they didn't look like it. So I think these are like the original formula. We'll have to see, you know, what they end up being. I do know that they are coming out soon, like second week of August. That was what I originally heard. So once I have more, you know, details on the dates, I will let you know. I will pick up both of those just so you guys can see them. There is also a private rose collection. There are two eye color quads, rose teas and insolent rose. Insolent rose already exists. Uh, two satin matte colors, intimate rose and euphoric rose. I'm not sure if both of those are repromotes or one is. I'm not I'm not positive about that. They are limited edition packaging. It's like a white packaging. Um, so if you're if you like to collect limited edition packaging, even if you already have one of the products, maybe that's something you do. Uh, that is something to be aware of. There's also a cushion foundation case that has the limited edition packaging as well. I will pick up the new Tom Ford eyeshadow quad. I think it's rose tees. I'll be honest, it doesn't look like it's something I'm going to like. It looks pink and it looks pale. Like it, it doesn't look like there's a lot of pigment there. However, I have noticed from my analytics, looking at what people watch, a lot of times the, the views that I get, the most views that I get are on products that are the most neutral and frankly, least pigmented. So I think that's really interesting. So obviously there are a lot of you out there 
who are really interested in a light, easy, everyday, go to the store, go to the you know, office kind of look. So I wanna make sure that I'm providing um, you know, content that you all wanna see. So it sounds like, even though we all kind of complain in the beauty community about these, these neutrals, there's still a lot of interest out there for everyone to see them. Let's talk about Chanel. So Chanel has a couple of different collections coming out. And as I said in my intro, there are a few things that I have over on Patreon that I haven't seen anywhere. Not really sure what collection they'll be part of, but you know, um, I haven't seen them yet. I'm guessing holiday. Uh, so for fall, there are six eyeshadow powders. They're in like little containers, two nail polishes, two blushes, and six cocoa flashes. Again, I apologize about the background noise, but somebody has decided to mow their lawn at six o'clock at night. Um, seriously, do not know what's wrong with people. The um, eyeshadow shades, 402, 404, 406, 408, 12, and 14. I am picking up 402, 404, and 406. I do love the idea of these. I just don't know how much fallout they'll be, how easy they'll be to use. Again, I like the I like the idea. So I'm picking up those three shades. The blushes, um, Tavia's got pictures up and, and other people do, and I'll make sure they're all up, the different ones that I have. They look much more pigmented in the in the <laughs> in the pan than they do in the swatches. However, a lot of times uh, the swatches are done in such a manner to appeal to a certain audience. And so I, I don't know yet if these could be built up. Maybe they're just, you know, light at, at, if you put them on a certain way. I need to have them in hand to play around with them, but I'll definitely get them both so you can see. Cocoa Flashes, there are six shades. I am buying 150, 152, and 154. The others were like too red, too purple for me. Love the formula. Very interested in, in those three shades, but I don't think it's going to be anything different or new because that's been out before. The blushes and the eyeshadow powders are, are new products. The nail polishes look lovely, but I have plenty of nail polish. And there's the Chanel Baroque collection. Now he's trimming his... <sighs> Seriously, man. Okay, so the Chanel Baroque collection. Now, I love the fact that Chanel has done something different with the packaging. On the inside, we've got that sort of gold foil, gold leaf, whatever that is, on the inside of the packaging. I think that's really different and unique, and I'm glad Chanel has like done something a little outside the box. That's great. Um, but the the shades themselves, the the, the <laughs> curation of shades that are in the, the palettes seem a little odd to me, and honestly, uh, they don't look that pigmented. And again, it's hard to tell. Got to try them in person. So I'm not making a judgment until I get them. You know, but I wasn't like, I wasn't like, yay, they look beautiful. Uh, so 308 is Imperial, which is a yellow, orange, terracotta pink, dark purple, silvery, uh, silvery pink, yellow. So there's obviously like a duochrome shift. 318, which is Venetian, which is a beige pink, coral pink, brown, white, green. So again, that's got to be the shift. The Cristal, which is light pink, mauve, taupe, and light blue. So again, there's got to be like a shifting there. He's still, still mowing his lawn. Um, Baroque, which is antique gold, ruby red, emerald green, and pearl white. This was the one that actually interested me the most, except for that ruby red shade. And I get it, it's Baroque, it's over the top, it's, you know, that's a Baroque style, but I really would have liked this so much more if the red wasn't in there. <laughs> I do plan on picking all of these up to show all of you, so, you know, I'll certainly let you know. My understanding is that collection, the Baroque collection, goes on sale worldwide, sept worldwide September 1st. Don't have confirmation of that, but that was what I understood. The uh, fall collection should be here in, the, in like early mid August. Again, that's my that's my get that's my take right now. I'm not absolutely positive of that, but that's what I think. There's also the oversized highlighters, uh, the big highlighters. I asked my essay about that, and uh, she doesn't have a date for those. Doesn't even know if she's getting them. Uh, I do know that you can get them online overseas. So, you know. They've been available, like, we've seen pictures of those for a long time, and I know some people have actually been able to buy them. So I don't have details on that yet, but 
I'll let you know when I do. Uh, and then the other eyeshadow, the highlighter that, again, I have referenced over on, uh, on uh, Patreon, there's fuzzy pictures. They're not great pictures. Um, I think they're going to be holiday. I'm not really sure, but they'll be the holiday, you know, gift sets and stuff from, from Chanel. So I have to give it to Chanel. At least they, I mean, I can't knock the companies for doing complete neutrals for financial reasons and then not at least congratulate Chanel for trying something different, you know, and it'd be hypocritical. Uh, so talking about neutrals, uh, Chantecaille is coming out with their collection, their fall collection, which are the, you know, this little square independent, um, single shadows. Although what is new is that they are two matte shadows in Palomino and Bay, uh, Luminescence, which they've had before, which is in Rowan and Pinto, uh, Pinto. This is like the Mustang collection horses. Um, so they'll have those pictures on the front of the packaging, like they've had before with other, um, with other animals. And then the lip veils they'll have in Wild Begonia and Laurel. I will definitely pick up the entire collection. Yes, they are neutrals, but I have a feeling that they're going to be very popular because, again, I think there's a lot of people buying neutrals, which is why the companies keep coming out with them. And hopefully the matte formula is excellent. The luminescent eyeshades, I really do enjoy. I think they're excellent. I'm just not a great, like, I'm not a huge single shadow person. So I, I generally don't, you know, have a lot of single shadows. I do have all the Chantecaille ones because I do enjoy them. But I do prefer, you know, palettes of some kind. Okay. Suku. There's a lot coming out for Suku. And I think it has something to do with their 20th anniversary. So there's a fall collection that's coming out, uh, which was actually, I think, accidentally, I'm not sure if it was an accident, but I think it is, I think it was, uh, was released a little bit early uh, on Selfridges. And so there were two, um, uh, two eyeshadows. Uh, 127, which is a ruby red and blue gray, and then 128, which is a golden yellow and moss gray. They are limited edition. Yes, I am buying them. There are um, moisture-rich lipsticks. There's three, 126, 127, 128. Um, they, I'm picking them all up. <laughs> Very excited about getting them. Pure Color Blushes in 142 and 143. These are also limited edition, um, and I'm going to get those. No question. There's also a new product from them, Liquid Luster Eyes. So these are liquid eyeshadows, and I think these are different from what they've had before. Um, there are uh, seven of them, and two are limited edition. 101, which is a charcoal gray with a hint of multicolored pearl, and 102, which is a yellow amber with a hint of shiny multicolored pearl that gives the eye a special glittery look. Every, all the other shades, I think, I think are permanent. Again, though, things can go wrong and, you know, they had the melting blushes that were permanent and then they discontinued them. So I'm getting all of them. Uh, they are available from the 27th of July at Selfridges, which is like either as this goes up or maybe it, it's already passed by the time this goes up. Uh, I will have links up on Instagram when they're available. And uh, I get my things from Harrods, and so that will be later. It'll be, uh, I think, the second week of August uh, when they'll be available there. Then for the 20th anniversary, there are face compacts, 101, 102, and 103. Face and eye palettes, which are 101 and 102. The face compacts are like, I think they're highlighters, highlighting powders. I'm not absolutely sure. You can see from the pictures, it's a little hard to sell. Um, uh, there's a lip kit that has four lipsticks in it, like they're most popular. Like there's a lip wrap, a lip moisture lip, you know, you get the, the different ones. And um, so you can try the different formulas, which I think is great. I also hear that there's going to be even more. So in other words, there's going to be something in July. There's going to be something in um, uh, July, August. There's going to be something in September, October. There's going to be something in November slash December for like the holiday. So there's going to be a lot of Suku coming, which makes me very happy because I love the Suku line. Um, but generally, I do not demonstrate it here early or even when it first launches, because I get it from Harrods, so it takes a very long time to get here. So if you're interested in Suku and you see these pictures and you're like, I absolutely want to get them, July 27th at Selfridges, I think it's August 8th at Harrods. I will have links up on Instagram as soon as they you know, are available, and I'll keep letting people know over on Instagram. I'll also let people know on Patreon, I'll have links over there. I'll try to do it on my community page as well, but these things generally go f quickly. And I'm going to assume the 20th anniversary stuff will go fast because it's, you know, it's 20th anniversary. They're not going to, it's not going to be part of the permanent collection. Um, and I, I believe that launches September 15th. So you've got some, some time for that. 
Valentino has a second color flip eyeshadow palette. Um, I love the Valentino products. I think they're overpriced because of the cases and stuff, but the eyeshadows weren't my favorite. So I will not be picking that up. Um, if you like the Valentino shadows, I don't think it's a bad thing. I just, that's not something I'm gonna, I'm gonna get. Okay, last but not least, Pat McGrath. And I love Pat McGrath for the end because I am not gonna pick up this mothership. And this is the only mothership that I, that I've, that I, I am not planning on picking up. I have all of her motherships and I've bought every single one when they've come out. Now, it looks like a beautiful palette. I am sure the shades are gorgeous. I'm sure the formula is gorgeous. It's Pat McGrath. But the shades for me look so much like all the other shades that I've seen from her for the last like four palettes that I just can't justify buying it for my collection with everything else that I have to buy because, not because I don't like it or because I feel like it's repetitive, which I do, but because you guys don't generally have as much of an interest in the Pat McGrath products as you do in Chanel, Dior, Tom Ford, at least here on this channel. If I look at my analytics about what you're interested in having me review and I get feedback from all of you from you know, your comments, which I do read through, I read through all your comments, um, and I can see who's watched what videos, the Pat, Mac Pat McGrath products are not something that you guys are necessarily looking for from me. I think that may be because there's a lot of content creators here on YouTube that, that review her products and they do a fantastic job. So um, I'm not picking it up. Uh, you know, maybe in future years, if it goes on sale or something, I'll get it. But for those reasons, it's just, it doesn't really make financial sense for me to do it here since you guys aren't really, at least from what, what you're saying from watching and, and commenting, uh, you'd much rather have me pick up all of Dior, all of Tom Ford, all of Chanel, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I want to comment just overall on this trend we're seeing about the pinks, the neutrals, the beiges from all these collections. And I, and I, I want to address, you know, sort of the, the thinking behind all of this. And I've mentioned it in other videos. I've talked about like the neutrals and I, I expected it to continue. And, you know, the, the economy's not great and businesses have to come up with something safe and that appeals to most people. But I'd also say, like my decision-making here about what I'm going to buy to review for all of you, I have to take into account the analytics that I see and the data that I have that shows me what you're interested in. I'm here for all of you. I'm here to provide content that you want to see. Uh, if I was just buying makeup for myself, I would not buy this much makeup. It would not make any sense. But because I'm reviewing it for all of you, it makes sense to do. So I generally don't buy products that you guys aren't interested in seeing um, because that wouldn't make a lot of sense. Now, if I had all the money in the world, I could just buy everything. Um, but no, I am not in that position. Uh, I don't think many people are. So I have to make decisions based on, you know, data and information and, and financial decisions. And the companies that we're dealing with are doing the same thing. They have information that shows what sells and why, and that's one of the reasons they make the decisions that they make. Uh, Cassie, uh, Cassie Thorpe did a uh, video on this. She was talking about fashion. Vestiaire is like a pre-loved market. You can buy uh, pre-loved items. And she was talking about, they had a buying guide that went up, and I was looking at it as well. And it talks about the best-selling products and best-selling brands in designer market and luxury market. And it's fascinating because Really what it's saying is that people are buying safer things, safer products. What do I mean by safer? Classic lines, classic designers, uh, neutral shades, jewelry that, that is like timeless. There's not, and he's still mowing his lawn. He's, I mean, it's been like an hour. Who mows their lawn for an hour? The lots aren't that big here in Boston. Um, sorry, it's just driving me nuts because literally it's six o'clock at night. <laughs> well, now it's seven. Um, I don't know. Strange people in the world. I went and looked out the window because I had to see what was happening and he has a blower and he's blowing all of the possible minuscule grass remnants off of his driveway. Anyway. 
Um, so <laughs> these decisions that are being made are being, you know, being made by companies, financial interests, those types of things. And all of these brands that I'm talking about um, are large brands that, you know, have financial interests that that's, you know, those are their backers. Those are the people that are making those types of decisions. And so, you know, it's either private equity money or it's a big company money like Estee Lauder, who owns like everybody or LVMH. Those types of companies, you know, they're making decisions about their products that are going to appeal to the mass market. Now, sometimes you have some very high end luxury brands that will make certain products that only appeal to a very, very small group of people. So Chanel does that, Hermes does that, um, Louis Vuitton, Gucci, all those brands. But if you notice, what they do is those are like their high end products in those brands. So like there are different, like for Gucci, there are different levels of Gucci. Like there are products that you really don't see every day, like when you go into a store, that are things that you might see on the runway, there's like two pieces. And yes, they those might be more avant-garde and more like unique and special, but they're also like $20,000 and only two people are gonna buy them anyway. The things in the, in the broader categories that are gonna appeal to more people, they tend to have, you know, analytics back up to decide what, they use analytics to decide, okay, what is going to be the product that appeals to the most people so we can make the most sales. That is just how this works. Um, which is why a lot of people really love indie brands, which I totally get, I understand. Um, you know, they, they're small independent brands that haven't taken outside money, that haven't taken private equity, that uh, can, can do, you know, what they want to do with their product. Again, though, they tend to be limited in the amount of product that they can actually produce because they don't have those large backers. They aren't in a Sephora or an Ulta. So just things to keep in mind. Um, I also do want to uh, mention that, you know, Pat McGrath is now at Ulta. So again, broader group of, of folks that the, the products are appealing to. You know, it's not really a niche anymore. It's a broader spectrum of products that are coming out. And as it relates to all that, Prada is coming out with their beauty line. I don't know anything about it. I don't know details. I don't know what's in it, but I know they're coming out with one. And Dolce & Gabbana is completely redesigning their beauty line. So everybody's into beauty. Everyone wants to have a beauty line, beauty market. Um, I'm assuming it's because there's financial gain there to do that. Uh, it'll be really interesting to see what type of products they, they come out with. So. Now, all that being said, I'm still excited about the fall collections. I like fall just as a general sense. I like fall collections. I, you know, I like the cooler weather. I like uh, the different tones that come out for, for fall. It, it, it just appeals to me. So I'm still gonna pick up, like I said, almost like, I'd say 75% of the things I talked about today, I'm picking up for all of you and I'm going to review. The things that I'm not gonna pick up are things because I just, I don't think you're interested. If I am wrong, let me know. Um, let me know that those are things that you really want to see because at least up to this point, that's not not what I've heard from, from all of you. And again, I want to be providing the content that is of most interest to you. So that was a lot. I tried to, to keep it, you know, as condensed as possible. I didn't do every brand, um, but I wanted to hit the high points. I'd love to hear what you're most excited about and which collections you definitely want to pick up. So let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for joining me today, guys. I really do appreciate it. I hope to see you in another video really soon.